Friday living. Oh, uh, Willie and Betsy, two of the kids in the neighborhood, are coming through the door right now. And watch Mr. Wizard. Hi, Mr. Wizard. What you doing? Well, come on down here and I'll show you. Magnetism. Hey, mm, Mr. Question mm. mark, please. Mm -hmm. How'd that get? Was because of that magic word, electromagnetism. Willie, do you know what electromagnetism means? Electro for maybe electricity? Mm-hmm. Magnetism for well, magnetism. Magnetism made with electricity. Now let's look at that thing called electromagnetism. Okay. Betsy, you know that a magnet picks up things, don't you? Oh, sure, tax. Pim, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, now here's a bar magnet. And I'm going to put a piece of cardboard over the top. And you take this uh, shaker that's got iron filings in it, and you put the iron filings on top of the cardboard. Sure. Hey, Mr. That bar, ma bar magnet's making a design. Isn't that funny? Now, you see, that's because lines of force attract the iron filings, and so we're actually making the lines of force of the magnet visible with the iron filings. I feel like that. Yeah. Now, a long time ago, magnetic field around the wire. Really? Mm-hmm. And that's what I use to make this question mark here. Oh, but I don't see any wires. Oh, here, look. It's a question mark. That's right, and when I turned on the current, electricity through the wires, and the electricity created a magnetic field around the wires, and that's what attracted the iron filings, and that's what made the question mark. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, let's uh, disconnect this right here, and go back and look at some other things that we can do when we send electricity through a wire. Now, come on. Okay. You kids get right here by the desk. Because I want to show you this. Now, all the things that we're going to do here today, you could do using dry cells at home. But because we're going to use a lot of current and do lots of things, we to substitute this piece of equipment for the batteries. See? It's a special sort of uh, equipment that changes alternating current to direct current. Oh, I see. You mean a uh, current that goes back and forth to a uh, current that goes one way. Mm hmm So every time we connect this, this thing right here, you take that one, you take this one. Every time we connect the below's battery clips to any piece of equipment here, we're doing the same thing as connecting dry cells. Now let's connect those things right here to this wire. Betsy, you connect yours here on top, and Willie, you connect yours on the bottom. Okay, now Betsy, you sprinkle on the iron filings. I'll turn on the current. All around. Now, Willie, you tap the piece of wood. Hey, look at the circle. Oh, well, looks just like concentric circles. Now, do you know what's forming in the circles around the wire? Well, uh, isn't it the electricity going through the wire that's causing the magnetism? Right. Now, how could we make that magnetic field stronger? You could use a longer wire. Yes, that's right. You could use a longer wire, but that means we have to stretch it all the way across the room. Now, how could we get that same length of wire, but, you know, make it shorter? Oh. You take off your battery clips. Okay. Will you take yours off the bottom? Well, let's go down there and look at that. You connect yours over there, Willie, and Betsy, you connect yours there. Now, see this wire here? Hmm? This is just like the wire back there. This time it's coiled around underneath the board and comes up through this hole and goes round and around and around. Now, Betsy, you take the iron filings and sprinkle them all over the board. Okay. Okay, I think that ought to be enough. Now, Willie, you tap the board. Hey, look at the circles formed around the wire. You see the, all the circles there? And you see how strong it is in the middle? And that's because we've got the wires together and the magnetism is increased. Now, how could we actually make the magnetic field even stronger? Can't use any more wire. No, can't use any more wire. Well... I'll give you a clue. Use something that they make magnets out of. Oh, iron. And here, Willie, you take the iron bolt and slip it inside the coil. Okay. And then tap the cardboard. Sure. Hey, Mr. Wizard, look, we we put we put some more power on that. Look at the lines are curving in and out. Yeah, that's right. Now we uh, what we've actually done is made a real electromagnet by putting a bolt in there, which sort of acts as a funnel, or it kind of attracts all the magnetism you see, and that's what makes the ma lines of magnetic force stronger because we had that core in there. Mm -hmm. Now. Let's use the same idea uh, in electromagnet, in other words, coils with a core in the center. But this time, let's make the core free to move and make a sort of magnetic jumping jack. 
Here, I'll turn the current off. You take the clips off, Betsy, and Willie, you take the bolt out. And come on over here to the table. Okay. Now, Betsy, you take one and I'll take one. You connect your battery clip down there and I'll connect mine up here. Let's see what's going to happen when I turn on the current. See, the current is going to come up here through the wire after I turn on the switch and go down through this wire, through these wire coils, all the way down here, you see? Then when it gets down here, it's going down through this wire and it's going to touch that mercury down there. You see the mercury in the dish? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, that mercury conducts electricity and it's also touching this piece of metal here. Well, the current then is going through the metal and back here to the switch again. Oh. So what do you think is going to happen when, I, when the current starts going through the wire, Betsy? Well, there'll be magnetism around the coil. That's right. Around each one of those coils, there'll be a magnetism. And Willie, what's going to happen when there's magnetism in each one of those coils? Well, the coils will be pulled together. That's right, they'll be pulled together by the magnetism. And Betsy, what's going to happen to the length of the coil when the wires are pulled together? It'll get shorter. That's right, it'll get shorter. Then Willie, what's going to happen down here? Well, the piece of wire will go out of the mercury and mm -hmm. break the circuit. It'll break the circuit. And then what happens to the magnetism here in the coil? It's released. I and mean, there isn't no anymore. Magnetism. That's right. So what'll happen to the length of the coil? It'll uh, increase. It'll, it'll go get down. longer again, and then the point goes back into the mercury, and what happens? It uh, goes back up again. Goes back up again, so it'll go up and down. Okay, I'm going to turn on the switch and watch what happens. Hey, that's something. Look See at it go up and down. Mm. Gee, it's really a jumping jack. Well, that's right. Now, that's because we have electricity going through the wires and creating magnetism, pulling the wires together and making it jump up and down. Now, how can we make that magnetism stronger? With the iron bar. Sure. Well, you take that iron bolt and put it right down through the center of the coil. Look what's happening! Look jump? at it jump up and down now! Real fast! Now there we've got an electromagnet, you see, because we've got electricity going through the coils, creating the magnetism, and we're concentrating the magnetism, we're making it stronger by having an iron core, that bolt. It really jumps, doesn't it? Sure does. Okay, now let's turn it off. And Betsy, you take off that battery clip, and Willie, you take out the bolt from up there. Okay. Now, you take this. I'm going to try okay. to put this in a shelf without spilling the mercury. There. Right. Now, come on up here. Here's another electromagnet, the one you're looking at right there, Betsy. Bring it over here. <coughs> And you get down and see if you can find the electromagnet. Here, wait, I'll put my leg up there and you can sit down right on my leg. There. Electromagnet. Find the electromagnet. Um, right there? Mm-hmm. Now, I want you to tell me what's going to happen when I turn on the switch and you start right here and trace the circuit. Well, electricity is going to come through the switch right here. Mm -hmm. It's coming down this wire. And it'll go around and around and around there. And then it'll come back up and it'll go on this wire right here. Up to the nail. Okay. <clears throat> now, when the electricity is going through that wire round and round, what's going to happen? There'll be magnetism, mm -hmm. and that'll draw up the hinge, mm -hmm. and um, it'll snap it. Yeah, that's right. Until you take your finger off yeah. the switch, and then what happens? Then uh, there won't be any uh, magnetism anymore, and it'll drop down. Mm-hmm. It'll go up and down, up and down. Now, you mm -hmm. put your hand up there on the switch and work it up and down like a telegraph key when I turn it on. Okay. Yeah. See that? Mm. See how it jumps up and down? I put that nail on the outside there so I give it a little more weight and makes a little more noise. Uh -huh. Now let's let Willie try it. Sounds and looks just like one a regular railway office. That's a regular telegraph key. In fact, you may be surprised to find out that that's exactly the way a telegraph key in a telegraph office works. You have an electromagnet that moves a little lever up and down. That's what makes the click. I see now. Let's see what I need to make one. A hinge mm -hmm. and some wire yeah. for the electromagnet, two screws, some wood, a metal strip up there, and, well, some batteries. And some batteries, and you're all set. Uh -huh. I, uh, you can probably have a lot of fun making one of these, but I'd suggest if you're going to make one at home, that you make one that has a lot better sound and uses an ordinary tin can. A tin can? In fact, I've got one all made up over there. Go on over and look at it. Oh, boy. 
See this one? real neat, Mr. Wizard. Well, I'll bet you if you step back just a minute so I can put these two battery clips on here. Now, let's trace the circuit. You see what happens here? The electricity goes up through this battery clip, through the wire, and and when I push down on the key, goes through here, around through this wire, see, and up and goes around through, it makes an electromagnet right here, and then, of course, goes back to the other battery clip. Mm -hmm. So now, what will happen, then, when the magnetism is created right here? Well, the can will be pull pulled toward the electromagnet. Mm -hmm, except that I've got the can bolted down, so it can't move. What do you think will happen, Betsy? Mm, I don't know. Well, here's what's going to happen. The electromagnet is going to pull the can bottom in this direction. And then it was going to pull it until it touches the bolt that the electromagnet has wound around. And then the elasticity of the can is going to pull the bottom of the can back. So it's going to vibrate back and forth. And you know what happens when something vibrates back and forth fast enough? Oh, sure. It creates a sound. It makes a sound. Okay, you touch the key and see. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Got to turn on. Okay. That's real nice. Now, oh, Willie, why don't you use that key and send me a message in Morse code? I'd be glad to, but I don't know the Morse code. Well, I kind of thought maybe you didn't, so I'm all prepared for it. See? Here's a oh, chart. Oh, there's the Morse code. And this is the Morse code. Now, uh, why don't you find your initials and send them to me in Morse code? Okay, let me see now. Oh. W for Willie. And W for Watson. Very, very good. Now, Betsy, you've heard uh, people say Roger. Roger. How would you like to be able to send Roger just like they do in airplanes and uh, ships at sea? Well, how do we do it? Well, here's all you have to do. You see, instead of calling out A, B, C, the pilots and the people on the ship say Abel, Baker, Charlie, Dog, Easy, Fox. Oh, see? like one pilot calling to another pilot, he says, this is Abel, calling, calling Baker. Baker. That's right. When you get down here to the letter R, R stands for Roger. So all you have to do when you want to say yes, you send R. Dit da dit. Here, both of you try it. Okay. Okay, now you, Willie. Very good. Now, Betsy, how would you like to send your initials? I'll have to use the charts. Okay, you go ahead and use the charts and send me your initials. Okay. B for Betsy. Oh, I guess so. Let's see. Uh, this is a secret message about how to stay healthy and strong. How to stay healthy and strong, hey? Anything to do with sleep? No, sleep is important in staying healthy and strong, but this doesn't have anything to do with sleep. Is it about exercise? No, it doesn't have anything to do with exercise. For sure? No. Now, all these are important, as I say, for staying in good health, but you still haven't got it. Uh, is it about drinking plenty of water? Mm, now you're getting close. That's a well-balanced meal today. Right. See, good health begins with good nutrition. And this is a secret message about good nutrition. Now, here, Betsy, you take the chart. And you go on up to the writing desk there. And Willie, get up to the drawing pad. And you write down what Betsy tells you. Okay. Now I'll send you the secret message. Ready? Ready. I'm going to send the code here with the telegraph key. Betsy, you look it up on the chart and give Willie the letter. And Willie, you write the letter down there on the drawing pad. Okay. Here's the first one. Dip, dip, da, dip. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the next one. Da, dip, da, dip. C, C. Here's the next one. Da, da. Da, da. M, M. Here's the next one now. B. And here's the last one. Uh, dip, dip, dip. B. B. Now there's the secret code. If you can decipher that, why well, you'll know how to start out every day following the rules of good health. Let's see. F C M B B. I know, Mr. Wizard. Fruit. Cereal, milk, bread, and butter. That's right, Willie. That's the secret code to good health. Mm-hmm. Well, it's part of the code to good health, and it's really not much of a secret, Betsy. 
because all over the country, thousands of boys and girls start out every day with a cereal breakfast like that. And you know why? It sure tastes good when you get up in the morning. Roger! And their moms like to make it because it's easy to prepare and it costs less than any other meal of the day. Roger! And you get from one-fourth to one-third of your whole day's food needs when you've had a breakfast of fruit, cereal, milk, bread and butter, or other foods for variety. And there's the key to the most important reason of all. Nutrition experts found that a good breakfast should give you from one-fourth to one-third of all the food elements you need to keep going all day long, and that there's no better way to get them than from a breakfast of fruit, cereal, milk, bread, and butter. Then, too, doctors found in a series of tests on college boys and girls at a big medical school that after a breakfast of fruit, cereal, milk, bread, and butter, you're able to work better, you're a lot keener and sharper, and your muscles don't get so tired, especially during the late morning hours. So you see, there's plenty of scientific proof that it's smart to eat breakfast. Roger. Roger. Is that the way a doorbell or a buzzer works? Well, somewhat, although there are some differences. In fact, I've got a homemade one over here. You kids go on up and clear off the table and I'll get it. Okay. I'll connect it up, and then we'll see how this works. Okay. Okay. Now, I see the electricity is going through this switch here, along this wire, see, past this screw, and on this piece right here. And then it'll come up out here and go through that little contact point, and then around in the wire, all the way around here, and around through the electromagnet, and then back over here. Now, what happens then when the current goes through the electromagnet, Betsy? There'll be magnetism there. That's right. And then what will happen to this arm right here, Willie? Well, it'll break the circuit. That's right. Break the circuit just like a switch. So then there won't be any more magnetism in here. And because this arm is connected, see, with the rubber band here, the arm is going to be pulled here when there isn't any magnetism anymore. And that means the contact point will be established again mm -hmm. and more magnetism. So it's going to vibrate back and forth. And that's <laughs> what makes the sound. Okay, Betsy, you push the switch and hear it. See it? Now, Willie, do you think you could do the same thing with this commercial buzzer or bell right here? I'll try. You try it. Okay. Well, the wire comes through here into the push button and goes out again onto the buzzer here. Mm hmm And goes up through to this metal piece, the contact point. There's the contact point there, and this is the one that vibrates. That's mm -hmm. right. And it goes into the electromagnet. Mm hmm There's two of them. That's right. There's two of them. It makes it stronger when there's two of them. Oh. Then it comes back here and goes through the wire and comes back to the off, to the, the circuit. Okay, now you push the uh, button and see what happens. See that? Mm -hmm. Now, Betsy, you push yours and you watch this one vibrate, and Willie, you push yours and you watch that one vibrate. See that? Okay. Now, let's have some fun with some mysteries using electromagnetism. Come on over here. Okay, now you kids go around the desk and watch out for the cord there, Willie. And you get down right there in the corner and you kneel down. Okay. Now down there on the floor, Betsy, you'll find... Sure. You, it's notice it's attached to a string. So you take, pick up the ball until it goes just to the top of the string, and then let go. Okay. Hey, how does that stay there? See how it stays up there? Wow, that's something, Mr. Wizard. Now, it's resting on the book. Just a minute, I'm going to pull it back, and you'll see that it's not connected to the book in any way. Okay, let me get my finger in there and move it out a little bit. Wow, that's something, Mr. Isn't Wizard. Isn't that something? There we go, see? Box, either uh, run your finger up there between. Yeah. Remember, I told you we were going to do some mysteries with an electromagnet. Can sure you figure out, Betsy? Betsy, can you figure out where the electromagnet is? Well, I think it's in that box. Mm -hmm, you're right, it's in the box. And, uh, see, that's just plastic. Mm -hmm, shake it. There must be something metal in there. That's right, there's a safety pin inside. A safety pin's metal, and the magnet, they, they come together. Mm -hmm. Not only is it metal, but it's stitches attracted by a magnet. In fact, here, I'll take it apart. Just a minute. See, down it fell. Look inside here. 
See it? Oh, yeah. Right oh, there it is. Oh, there you have Big Mac. Mm -hmm. This is a commercial one, all wound and covered. Uh-huh. Now, here's another mystery. Let's get these books out of the way. Okay. You kids come back here and take a look at this little man here. Mm. See this little guy? Uh-huh. Now, oh, yeah. yeah, I gotta collect him up here. Whoops, look out, huh? Like this. Okay, you kids, watch this little man. Uh, Mr. Man, dance. Hey, Mr. Wizard, oh. what's making him dance? Well, he's not dancing. Dance again. What's making him stop and what's making him go? Well, Willie, see if you can solve this one now. Remember, we're talking about the mysteries of electromagnetism. I'll try. What makes the little man dance? Where's the electromagnet? Well, uh, those, uh, his legs are made of paper clips, and mm -hmm. those are metal, and mm -hmm. so the electric magnet must be in that little box little there. little box there, that's right. Uh-huh, and uh, when you, uh, well, when the electricity's on, the safety, uh, the, there's, ma there's magnetism created, and mm -hmm. the safety, or uh, rather the paper, paper clips, clips yeah. go down to the magnet. Mm -hmm. What makes them stay down in it? Well, you must have some kind of a switch you're holding, or I you've got secretly do. held. Right down here on the oh, floor, see? Uh -huh. You couldn't see it. Uh -huh. I had a switch, you see, and all I had to do was put my foot on it. It makes them dance. It makes them dance. And then to make them stop, all I did was go... And that's when <laughs> we made them dance again. I'll see? be doggone the dancing boy. A dancing boy with electromagnetism. Electro dancing boy. Those look like they're easy to make. Well, they're real easy mm. to make. All you need is paper clips, and you can cut this out of them. Mm -hmm. And a long wire and a belt. Now, you see, I've got some of the wire already wound around the nail. Uh, I want you to wind the wire around the rest of the nail. All right. That's going to take a long time, but you just keep on winding. Kind of tough wire, huh? Yeah. Well, this is the wire that you get from a... Uh, doorbell. Oh. I think that ought to be enough. Okay. Fine. Okay. Now, Ray, you take the battery. Sure. And lay it down on its side so you can connect these two wires. And you connect one of them right to those little posts there. And Betsy, uh, you've made an electromagnet. So can you take the nail like this and hold it? Okay. And don't connect the other wire. Well, you just hold it off now. Okay. Now let's see if the, if the big nail is an electromagnet. You put it down into the little nail. See? Okay. Hold it on good and tight. Okay, now, Betsy, pick up the little nail. Gee, look wow. what a powerful magnet I made. Okay, isn't that something? Now let go right there, Willie. Hold it up once, Betsy. Hold it on good and tight. Okay, now take, turn the current off. Ooh. Wham. <laughs> now, you see, Hold we even down. began to make the nail into kind of a permanent magnet. See? After uh -huh. a while, it, uh, the, the magnetism stays there. Stays in the nail, that's right. Now, that looks pretty powerful, doesn't it? It's not very powerful at all. You can make one of these, uh, one of these at home, but I've got one that was made professionally, and I want to show you how much more powerful electromagnet you can make using the current from just one dry cell. Now, Betsy, you take the wire off here, okay. and Willie, you come with me. Sure. Here, Willie, you take the back? Sure. Betsy, you see that typewriter table up there? Yeah. Did you get it and move it out of it? You come with me. Okay. Get it all right? What kind of thing is wow. that? Isn't that something? All right, we put it around Jeez. here like this. Never You'll seen see. anything like this. We certainly wow. haven't. Now, come on out over here so you can see. See this up here? Uh-huh. That's an electromagnet, a very oh. special kind. And the current to supply the for the electromagnet comes from these wires, see, and goes over down here. Now, Betsy, where's that battery? <laughs> we'll put the battery in right like this. Now I'll connect it in, uh -huh. but it's still not turned on. Kind of there's a switch down there, uh -huh. and the switch is open. Okay, piece of metal here. Uh -huh. Well, that goes right here at the bottom of the electromagnet. Jeez. Now, Willie, my boy, would you like to swing? On what? On the swing here. Well, I can't swing on that. Well, you go ahead and try it. Ease your weight down real carefully. Now, there's a current from one battery. Well, there's a pole. Gee, hey, Isn't one battery. One battery, hold up. In fact, here, you're nice and comfortable? Okay, look out. 
Wow. See that? <laughs> You're crying for one. Hey, I try it? Well, now wait, I'll for you to do it. Willie, you stop, just like that. Yes. And Betsy, you see that switch up there? You go up in the switch. All right. Watch what happens to Willie. Only what? one batter. Were you expecting that? No. Well, kids, here, will you hold this? We've had a lot of fun playing around today, but actually the thing that we've been talking with is very important in your everyday life. In fact, every time you ring a doorbell, uh, make a call on the telephone, send a telegram, turn on the radio, or watch television, you're using something that's no longer a question. Electro-magnetism!